happen once again. But right now we're very blessed to check in with Professor Jeff Stein, who's hanging out over on Eastern Iowa this morning. How are you doing, Professor? Very well. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Now, something we love to talk about every single day, besides giving people headlines mm -hmm. and what's happening and all that, is what's happening outside as far as traffic is concerned, because we're heading into that busy time of the day. And a lot of times we can take for granted, you know, the ability to use an automobile and our various means of transportation. But historically, uh, this hasn't really been around that long, correct? Absolutely. When you put it into context, Jackie, as automobiles were becoming more common, though, in the early part of the last century, the Iowa Highway Commission was formed on April 13th of 1904. Now, it began as part of the Iowa State College of Agriculture and Mechanic Arts, and it was designed to advise local communities about how to construct roads. That was a whole new thing when you had the horseless carriage going across the state. The first director of the commission was, in fact, the dean of engineering at Iowa State, Anson Marston. And the group's role was to test road materials, develop standards for highway repair and construction, and then report back every year to the governor of the state. And the budget for all that work? $3,500 a year, not even $300 a month. That's not even wow. enough to fix the potholes on my street alone, let alone for the entire year. But what was then Iowa State College is what you mentioned, was the first entity in the yep. state, in essence, to regulate the roadways in Iowa. Is that right? That's right. Iowa State College had that authority as part of its mission. But then after nine years, the Iowa Highway Commission separated from Iowa State. That separation happened on this date, April 9th of 1913, and the Iowa Highway Commission became a state-run organization. Marston was one of the three members of a commission that managed the new state agency. Now, transportation, of course, changed greatly over the decades, and by the 1960s, the interstate highway system was connecting segments of our country together, and the demand for more roads and better roads placed greater demands on our state's transportation network. And that kind of led to the system we have today, correct? Absolutely. A task force studied the issue for a number of years, and then in 1974, the Iowa Highway Commission was transformed into a new entity, you'll recognize the name, the Iowa Department of Transportation. And at that time, the legislature also created an oversight board called the Iowa Transportation Commission. That's a bipartisan seven-member body appointed by the governor that is in charge of major investment and policy decisions. Now, some people may wonder why other state agencies are all located in Des Moines, but the state DOT is in Ames. Well, in large part, it's because it's always been that way since the original Iowa Highway Commission was spun off from Iowa State College and became its own independent state agency. And it happened on this date in 1913. That makes a lot of sense now, because we were just talking about that about a year ago. Say, so why in the world is uh, Iowa DOT in Ames? And now we know why. Uh, but the uh, director of the DOT just lives down the street from where we do our show every morning. So that kind of helps if we want to talk to him <laughs> in the morning. But uh, an amazing place, especially when you consider the advancement in technology and the hub of all the computers and screens that they're looking at at a regular basis to make sure everything is staying safe. It's absolutely amazing. But to know, that's where it got its start is wonderful too. That is really cool. So you, you never know what comes out of the universities in this great state of Iowa, do you? Absolutely. And I just love the plow cam network now that you can watch yes. online <laughs> in the middle of winter. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic because not only do you know that they're out there in this stuff working, right. which, it, which we take for granted, but you know, sometimes when you see the plow and it can barely get through a road that's choked with snow, maybe, maybe somebody at home might think twice about taking that unnecessary trip and therefore they stay safe, which is obviously a great thing. Yeah, and that's the whole idea of the whole program, too, is making yeah. sure people can get uh, from point A to point B in a safe manner. So yep. that's perfect. All right, so if people want to go back and revisit some of these things that you mentioned, again, uh, the uh, DOT, Iowa DOT, starting uh, off in Ames, which is the reason that's where you find it right now. How can they go about doing so? IowaAlmanac.com. We've got this story and all the ones that we've talked about over time. Also, Twitter and Instagram at Iowa Almanac. All right, that's one of my favorite ones so far. I didn't realize there that. There you go. That's Keep cool. that in mind when you're heading out uh, to your next destination later on this morning and just be blessed that we have the opportunity to drive.
as we do every single day. Yeah. Thank you very much. And hopefully we won't have to look at the snowplow cam yes. anytime in the near future. That's there you go. right. We'll Thank talk you, to you, Professor. Tomorrow. I'm done with it. I'm totally done with it. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> All right, don't go.